Jefferson County was untouched land, full of timber for building shelter, wild game for sustenance, and countless numbers of lakes, rivers, and streams which provided plenty of fish. Waterways like Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River were also used as avenues of transportation for indigenous peoples. The area served as hunting ground for Oneida, Iroquois, and Algonquin tribes in the summer. They traveled south during the harsh winters, but it was their knowledge and experience with these lands that was essential in forming relationships with the European settlers. The first European who is credited with, with landing on, on Jefferson County soil is uh, Samuel Champlain. Um, he is reported to have, to have uh, landed in Jefferson County um, in 1609, and uh, this was during his raids on the Onondaga um, further south. Samuel Champlain was born into a family of mariners, and by the summer of 1567, he learned how to navigate the waters and draw nautical charts. Champlain first voyaged to North America on a fur trading expedition with Francois Dupont in 1603. During this time, he drew a map of the St. Lawrence. Champlain returned to France in the fall of that same year, and after publishing an account of his experiences, set out again in the spring of 1604. This expedition, led by Pierre Dugois Dumont, focused on areas south of the St. Lawrence. Well, it's interesting. We had Europeans in our area even before the settlers. Uh, the route coming down from Black Lake through the Indian River and connecting to the Black River has been a very, very ancient transportation corridor. And in fact, we recently learned that the French used that as their invasion route to central New York in the 18th century. So there have been Europeans crossing our area even before actual settlement. Our earliest settlers uh, tended to be French and uh, they had, were encouraged to come here by James Leray de Chameau, who was one of our earliest uh, land owners and land developers. The French alliance with Americans during the American Revolution is ultimately what urged James Leray de Chameau and other Frenchmen like him to come to the area. James Leray's father, Jacques Donation Leray de Chameau, invested in the American Revolution, providing money for weapons and supplies, Sadly, he lost the family fortune with that investment. After the war, the new United States government gave Jacques Donation Leray de Chameau land in payment of war debts. His son, James Leray, also purchased thousands of acres in northern New York. That acreage is known today as the town of Leray and Chameau in New York. It also includes the borough of Leraysville in Pennsylvania, also named after him. Another man looking to make money after the American Revolution was Alexander Macomb. He was a merchant, land speculator, and fur trader. Following the Revolutionary War, the new state of New York was struggling financially. To recover, the state offered tracts of land for sale. In 1791, Macomb purchased 3,670,715 acres in New York for a mere eight cents an acre. Macomb's purchase would make up much of Lewis, Jefferson, and St. Lawrence counties, and a part of Oswego County. However, Macomb wasn't able to turn over his land quickly, an issue aggravated by the Panic of 1792, which slowed land sales. As a result, Macomb found himself $300,000 in debt. He was never able to regain his fortune. Macomb passed away in 1831. The historic piece you just watched comes from an original four-part documentary series called Discovering Jefferson County. The series was produced right here at WPBS. If you'd like the entire series at your fingertips, you can order your own copy and enjoy all four parts in the comfort of your own home.